Thanks to Colonial Brewing Co. for sponsoring the pod today. Thank you, Colonial. What is up, everybody? Welcome to podcast two, Daniel. We've uh, we've made it to number two. We did it. Well, we're going around again, are we? <laughs> yes, we are. Podcast one was a huge success, I heard, and a uh, huge show today. Massive. Yep. Yeah. What have we got on? We've got two guests today, which is... Uh, two. We're not we, going to set that as a precedent, are we? No, we're, we're aiming to have one one guest a week. And, and we've got some pretty good guests lined up, but today we're fortunate enough to get two. Yeah, we doubled down. Which, which is uh, a very good thing for us. And hopefully the listeners will get a lot out of them. Yeah, we've got uh, Andrew McCormack coming in a bit later on. Yep. Macca is a sports journalist, Channel 7 uh, news reporter, mainly does uh, sports stuff. So it's going to be really interesting. I think we're going to chat to him a little bit about uh, some sports stuff, some AFL stuff, obviously. But we'll uh, dig into him about door stopping and all that. I reckon you? that's yeah. where we really want to hit him hard. We'll get into him about that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Just, just what, how he goes about his life and, and how he goes about stopping us as players and, and just relationship between us uh, as athletes. And, and obviously, he has to do his job as a reporter. But... Uh, We'll just yeah ask him a few details about that interaction between um, athletes, journalists, um, how they see our, our our job and how they do their job, and I guess uh, vice versa. Yep. But first up, we've got uh, an amazing uh, artist. Her uh, name's Daniel Weber, and she is best known for doing some stuff for The Rock. Now, that'll Dwayne be Johnson. That'll be an interesting story. I'm I'm actually looking forward to her coming in and. And talking about that because I mean, yeah. For those who don't know, it's amazing that how how someone can just go from um, being a local Melbourne artist drawing some um, paintings or and murals and stuff, and then all of a sudden has the Rock contact. The Rock flies overseas, gets on set. Yeah. All right, let's get straight into our chat with Danielle. Her Instagram account is Danielle's Artwork Official. She's insane, crazy story, uh, awesome person, incredible artist. Let's uh, let's welcome her and bring her in. I hope you guys enjoy it. For those of you who may not know, it's pros and cons time. <laughs> Mr. Smith? Hey, who's that? David Zakopakarakis. Wrong. How the bloody hell do you say that? Zakopakarakis! Pros and cons. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. How's your day? Yeah, good. Yeah. Do you like the room here? The nice little setup. It's nice, good vibe. Yeah. Good, good energy. Yeah. Do you nice like our pink cozy. Wall? you like our pink wall, by the way? Did you notice that at the I time? I was like, is this the place? Because the wall's really pink. Like, I wouldn't even paint my wall that pink. So, <laughs> <laughs> at least it stands out. It's good. For yeah. those who don't know, our, um, the office that we're in right now is a huge pink wall. Very but pink. I chose to, to do. It was a choice. It's <laughs> a cool coloured pink. It's a bit pastely a bit mm. musky mm. so he can do some artwork in here can't he there's nothing on the wall Look. yeah i think you guys need me in here yeah. to come back <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> let me so loose do whatever yeah you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um for for those who don't know and aren't aware of you uh, um, the most insane artist i've ever seen just oh. fyi like <laughs> unbelievable um and I, I think the first time i saw some of your stuff i think it was like a conor mcgregor one that you might have done okay. early days i don't know that how long been, ago that was ooh. Probably three years ago, maybe. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, I, thanks, you've been something about <laughs> right. Like, well, yeah. All over. Oh, Danielle trained for a while. That's OG, awesome. OG <laughs> follower for sure. Um, and and then from there, I think I started noticing some other stuff, and then obviously the Rock. You did a massive portrait of the Rock at yep. some point, and Amira, then yeah. I guess did that just kick everything off? Uh yeah. Well, the the first portrait I did of the Rock is what he actually saw, um, and that was. Now that I look back at it, it was horrible. Uh, that was that was 2014, so that's five years ago now. And um, then I met him the following year. And, yeah, I guess it did sort of kickstart everything um, and made me realise that it was something that I could pursue. Before then I sort of had my doubts, constant doubts, because, you know, being a creative, it's not yeah. con- you have to sort of continue, continuously hustle and look for work and make sure you've got, you know, some sort of gigs lined up and yeah. yeah. So you so, went uh, yeah. full, sorry, you went full time painting at that point? I was still, I was in the end of my double degree. So I was studying health sciences. I wanted to be a food scientist initially. And yep. uh, yeah, and I was studying health sciences and then um, I, I did a Bachelor of Arts as well. So I was doing yeah double degree and I was studying arts, but I wasn't enjoying it. So, but yeah, I sort of built out my business okay. as I was at university. And then um, it was, I was in the last like semester of, of my course when I met. Dwayne and that's when he was like you'd be stupid not to you know sort of pursue it so yeah. what, what made you so growing up as a teenager and that you, you're obviously doing creative pieces were you mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and then so then what what made you then have to have like someone like him to say um that oh you're amazing did you just 
Because, yeah, you have a lot of talent in that, but obviously did you not have the confidence in your artwork? Like, cause it's amazing pieces, but you said it took you till the end of that to actually meet him to then get involved and yeah. in start doing it more or? I, th- <laughs> I was convinced up until about, t- I think I was 20 or 21, that everyone could paint. Okay. I just enjoyed it more than other people. So I literally thought like Trust everyone me, could can't. join. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> wow. No chance. <laughs> I'm sure you could. You know, maybe not to this this degree, but yeah. yeah. Um yeah, I think I was just convinced that I like I liked. I didn't really see it as a big deal. I was like, oh, okay, like I can paint a few portraits and whatnot. And I guess, you know, being told at school that, you know, there's that stigma attached to artists and, you know, if you're going to be an artist, you're going to be starving, you know, you know you got to have a roof over your head. And I sort of had that instilled in me at a young age. So I wasn't really, yeah, I just thought that I'd take another, you know, pers- normal route as yeah. a, a career path. Um, but I'm fortunate that my parents sort of encouraged me otherwise and they encouraged me to keep painting and keep, yeah, keep keep persisting at it. And, yeah, if it wasn't for them, I definitely wouldn't have even entertained the idea of studying art. Not at all. So was The Rock um, a, a conscious piece to do that he would see or you just like, that'll be cool to paint? No, it wasn't. It's funny how those things happen. It was a client who wanted me to paint him and um, I still haven't c- contact with him yeah, up to this yeah. day because he obviously knows that that sort of triggered that. <laughs> um, yeah, so and, you know, I wasn't even ta- – I don't even think I tagged him. I wasn't – I knew who he was but, I mean, for like famous people – I don't really see him as a bit like it's a, he's a human, you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's yep. I'm not so I wasn't ever like and I wasn't into wrestling. So people yep. who are like day one fans of him don't yeah. like me because they're like you weren't there from the start, you can't <laughs> meet him. I'm like I'm sorry, I didn't watch wrestling, you know. So they're always going to be out there though. Yeah, so yeah, they're hating on me. So yeah. yeah, but yeah, so it like it sort of just happened. It was it sort of just fell into my lap essentially. So tell us what actually the finer details of it. What what yeah. happened? How'd you get onto to him and how or how'd he get onto your piece? So he saw the piece online and then he sort of like he shared it and or maybe hang on, he waited until he commented and then he yep. waited until I finished and then he shared it and said, Oh, looking forward to meeting you one day and I was like, huh? Like this is weird. <laughs> so I was like I was appreciative of the fact oh, that man. I was like, why is this, you know, person who's highly respected stopping and you know taking a a moment out of his life he's like the busiest human everyone everyone knows that yeah um and yeah so another friend had an idea like paint a painting of him and his mum because like like his story with his mum sort of resonates with me in a sense that his mum supported him and my parents have been super supportive of that so yeah so i did a painting of him and his mum and i was going to america anyway just do it like doing some solo travel through cuba and stuff you know solo travel through countries like that is good (laughs) um yeah so i just like took the painting with me and then he saw I was there, long story short, went up to Boston and met him on set of one of these movies. And Okay. Let's go back a second. <laughs> There's a lot in this. Long story like, short. <laughs> long story short. <laughs> long story short. You can't long story short that on us. Hang on a minute. So, um, so, what, so you're traveling, first of all, you painted it here. Yeah. And then how do you carry that with you on your travels? Solo, what it backpacking? What I was doing? backpacking. Oh no, and then you got so you painted the with, rock. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, how does that work? And I'm so clumsy too, like, everyone knows I'm a walking hazard. <laughs> and I like, there was a point where I was like quite sick in Cuba, so I'd lost the plot. And I was on my like fourth plane through Mexico to get to Boston because I hadn't planned to go to Boston, so I like changed all my flights. I'm about to get on the plane, I'm like, something's missing. And I was like, oh, oh no. shit, the painting. And I left it in the restaurant and the plane was like boarding. I had to like run back and get the painting, like the most important <laughs> thing ever. And yeah, so yeah, there's a few little like lot, not so long story yep. shorts like in there that is pretty funny. So you're in Cuba yeah. and you, how do you reach or how does he reach that you want to meet? Um, well, before I got to Cuba, I was in Miami and I like stood on the balcony. I was like, here's the painting of you and your mom. And he's like, he saw that I was there. So we got his social media manager to contact me. So and you put I that gave, on, sorry, you put that on social. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he saw that. Sorry. And I'm not a very good storyteller. Um, <laughs> and then his social media manager contacted me and got my international number, which I'm stupid because I only had that, like my mum had it and that was it. And then mm-hmm. I... Then I get a message and it's like, hey, D, it's DJ, like, da, da, da. And I was like, 
who's this? Like I wrote back, <laughs> texted back. I was like, who's this? And he's like texting me and he's like, it's Dwayne Johnson. I was like, through my phone. I was like, oh my God. I'm That's like, an it's unbelievable me. text to get, isn't it? Like, yeah. Well, I, I was one of the wrestling fans as a kid and all that. And yeah. To, for something like that, that would blow, absolutely blow my mind. It's, like, I'm so, it's funny because I'm so clumsy with it. Yeah. I was like, I literally wrote back. I was like, who's this? Like I wasn't even friendly. <laughs> I didn't even like, I, I should have known who it was. Yeah. <laughs> I've probably, I've still got the phone with those messages on yeah. it. It's hilarious. So, yeah. So, yeah, that that was that. And then, yeah, I changed a few flights and slept on the floor in Mexico and then eventually got to Boston. So, you go on Boston. What was he, he was on set, you're on, he was on set. What was he shooting, do you remember? Central Intelligence back then. So, okay. I got to meet, like, everyone on that and that was cool. Was cool wow. Yep. So, he, he calls you up, says, come, come to Boston, fly to Boston did he know, so he had obviously seen the painting before and was like, I need to, I need to have this. So mm-hmm. what was it like once you first met him? It was pretty, like once I got to set, you mean? Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> he like came down from his trailer, so he looked like even bigger. I was like, holy, I think, holy fucking shit. That's the first thing I said to him, <laughs> like literally. Sorry, excuse my swearing. That's what I said. Um, it, was, it was it was pretty like intimate. I don't know if that's a word to say to use, but I mean, because he like we went to his trailer, we were chatting. He was asking like about me, about my family, and I just yep. wanted to know about him. But he didn't want he didn't want a bar of it. He just Sorry. wanted <laughs> yeah. So it just shows the kind of person he is. Yep. And then he like opened the painting in front of me, and um, we sort of like wow, like y- yeah. So it was pretty cool like how it all happened. It wasn't just like here's a gift and he opened it later. Like yep. he literally opened it. In right. front of me, and then he'd sort of—it's like twenty minutes on, twenty minutes off. I think filming, so yep. we'd go to set. He like set me up with my little headphones. I was like sitting there, like watching him and Kevin Hart and Jason Bateman do like scenes, and then we'd go back to the trailer and like chat a little bit more, and then like go back to set. And wow. I was getting drained just from being pulled yeah. around with him. I don't know how. I don't know how they do it. Like it's unreal—the life that they how, live. Yeah. How is that? Like you've gone from being in Melbourne on holiday. On set in Boston yeah. with The Rock, with those other guys you mentioned. Yeah. Like, did you actually in that moment sit back and while they're filming, going, "What the hell is going what on? What am I doing here?" Yeah, Probably I- not. Now I do because I've learned from situations like that. Yeah. But it's like, take it in, like realize what the hell you're doing. Yeah. I was probably just sitting there, like, "Oh, cool." Like, <laughs> I was sort of like looking at the roof and stuff. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, it's not. Yeah. yeah. Learning from those experiences, I'm like, okay, you got to like realize what situation you're in and yes. really embrace that. But back then, I was just like, oh whatever like you know yeah so like 0.001 percent of the population would be able to do something like yeah that. Oh, it's unbelievable Unreal. yeah and, but the way he was introducing me to he's like this is danielle she's an art really cool artist from melbourne like da, da, da. i'm like how can you like i don't even do that on a day-to-day <laughs> basis let alone like you know he, you're trying to like record a movie and yeah. yeah yeah that's it, that's amazing yeah, so it's an amazing story so did you hear or did you get any info back on when... Because did he give it to his mum or did he... He did, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave it to his mum. I don't know if he waited for her birthday, but he said he was going to give it to her. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And did, did you hear back from... Tell him? me. I think he told me that, yeah. So you guys on texting terms? What's yeah. going on? Like, this is pretty damn cool. <laughs> yes. Can we, can, we, can we get on set? <laughs> <laughs> can we borrow your phone? He's changed his number since then, so yeah. there's been a few number changes, yeah. but yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, or sometimes because yeah. he DMs me sometimes. He's like, let's get off DM and like he'll yep. text me again and then yep. sometimes it's a different number. So wow. you'd have to though, wouldn't you? Oh, you'd yeah. have to, yeah. Him especially, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Unreal. You'd have to yeah. change. Um, so after that um, that portrait with his mum, commi- did you get commissioned to do another one of him? Is that how it worked out or did you choose to do another one? So Little uh, Rock loves himself. Everyone knows that. He, so he should. He's yeah. awesome. But oh, yeah. he, I, it had been, so I did that mural at the start of this year. So it had been like nearly like four years basically since I had painted him or five years since yep. I'd done the commission. Yep. So I was like, I really need to paint him again. He's going to be thinking like, what the F are you doing? You haven't painted <laughs> me. And I knew that and I, and I said that and I was like, but I was conscious of where I painted him next because I knew that when I did, it would it, like he'd see it and yep. he'd essentially be like, yeah, like you've painted me again. So I waited until I found the right place like right vibe right location awesome owners someone who's like started from nothing like similar story like it was a bit a bit more in depth you know yeah so the owner of training day gym he's started up his own gym and he's had that one in burwood for a while he's just opened another one in clayton and yeah he's like worked really hard and completely done it on his own so i was like you know what like i and i said to him i was like 
you need to let me paint the rock in your gym because I know he's 110% going to see it. And yeah, yeah, and that's what happened. And he literally said about fucking time. That's what he wrote. He texted <laughs> me. He's like about like effing time. <laughs> well, I have his, I, have, I wrote down his, uh, what, it, what he wrote on his Insta post was pretty amazing. So he wrote 20, 20 feet high of brown, bald, tattooed, determination, <laughs> sexiness and cheeky jokes. Amazing work from my friend and incredible artist, Danielle's artwork official, which is your Instagram handle. Always so humbling to see stuff like this, especially when an artist can express her love, passion and gratitude in such a powerful way. Great job, D, and thank you so much for sharing your immense talent with me and the world. 3.4 million views. <laughs> That's so nice. I should read that more often. I forget <laughs> that. <laughs> Maybe you should paint that on your own wall. I know. I should like <laughs> literally <laughs> paint that, get it printed. Yeah. So that, I mean, and, and then another. It says friend. How nice is that? It's pretty amazing word. Bless. Yeah. <laughs> so no, cool. seriously though. Another video he had uh, where I think it was a view, probably maybe a time lapse of you doing it or something and uh, 5.3 million views. What does that do for you as an artist? That, that from from you know traveling to be honest with you i hadn't looked at the views i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) i did that's cool though (laughs) that's on the recent one yeah yeah Yeah, that was on the like i watched it going up as it happened but i actually haven't been back i should like flag it so i can check it yeah (laughs) so that change does that change your you know as a business person now and as an artist who's making a business out of this did that change the business the first time and then again um, is in like the influx in work yeah. or I, I guess, yeah, people uh, like they associate you to the rock. They're like, oh, yeah. like you've painted for the rock, so I'm going to buy a print. So I have yeah. like one of your prints. So yeah, definitely in that aspect. I think people have more respect for you because you've been like, you've got this approval by someone who is, you know, ama- as amazing yeah. as him. So yeah, in, in that respect, yeah. But I feel like I'm still, still the same person, still the same business, mm. still like working closely with people and like, per- yeah. So, yeah. and that's what he would have always been like too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is, it definitely, definitely boosts your business having like someone that, ba- like someone like The Rock back yeah. you like mm. that. Oh, I, lo- I love the organic definitely. nature of just the way you're answering it. I don't even, didn't even look at the views. <laughs> I, like, I was like, that's the a- rocks is, yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing your, your attitude towards it. You just, you love painting. You love yeah. this. It's The Rock's done this, but oh, well, who, like, any other <laughs> paint, I'll, I'll do one another one or I'll do one for someone else. It's like, it's so organic. It's awesome. But with doing The Rock, then who else has it opened you up to doing? Has, has anyone else contacted you post doing The Rock? Any other yeah famous people around the world being able to do it? Have you done it for anyone else? Um, not like direct. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger recently. Yep, that one. Um, I, I Which don't we'll get into. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> Which we will, yeah. no, no, let's just skip over that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, uh, just Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh, no. That's what I, I love. Would, it's the organic nature of it. Yeah. Uh, cool. I, I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't say directly. Maybe not. Maybe I don't notice it. Yep. Um, but I haven't been like hit up. By like famous people would be like, can you, can, can we commission you? They get stuff thrown at them all the time. Yep. So I feel like they wouldn't come to, and I totally understand that and respect that, that they wouldn't be like, hey, I'll pay you to, you know, paint this because it's probably not even on, or they've already got it or they, yep. you know what I mean? Like they, right. they can, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I've had some other cool, uh, like I'm doing a painting for a baseball team in the US, but I can't say, I don't yep. think I can say you don't have to, no. Yeah, Probably so. shouldn't. <laughs> Probably shouldn't Exclusive. have said that one. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's cool. Yeah, heaps of opportunities. It's it's hard to pinpoint where, where they're coming yeah. from. But I feel like, yeah, everything's all relative. And, and yeah, I'm super grateful that... And, and The Rock even said that himself. He's, he's crazy. Like he was saying in his messages, he was like, this is not a race. Like, you know, it's one step at a time. I eventually, you know, he had a certain number of followers that he wanted to get me up to. Wow. And then had like another goal. So he's setting goal. you goals. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then he was like, this is not a race. Like, you know, I had this amount of followers in mind. And then, you know, the long term um, goal is to, you know, get you connected with bigger brands and yep. et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. what, are, what are you at now? If your followers are a goal, is that what are you at now? Uh, I think 100. I mean, you, you, you don't even, even know. know. They, go, yeah. they, go, they go down every day, so I don't check anymore. I'm like, it's an Instagram world. It's crazy. Okay, so. yeah, okay. I, think okay. clo- I think close to 200,000 though, right? Like it's getting Oh, closer. no, it's like 180, I think. Yeah. Okay, well, it's close yeah, to 200,000. <laughs> My Instagram, yeah. I love a love-hate relationship. I think everyone does with Instagram because I know I have to have it, yes. but I'm like, I try not to like base my life, you know, base my career around it. Unless the rock sends it down. Then, you know. I'm like, hey, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. Nah, so. so you've done, um, you've done, uh, I've looked at your artwork, like the big LeBron James, 50 Cent, all that kind of, those artists, musicians around the world that 
Do you do those for just because you want to do it or do people contact you saying, can you do these kinds of artworks for me personally? Uh, yeah, a lot of the time it is prompted by the client yep. um, and they have a vision in mind. And they just sort of say, hey, this is our vision. We want you to execute this. This is. Um, but then a lot of the time too that people give me freedom or they don't know exactly who they want, you know, painted yep. on their wall or what they want painted on their wall. And maybe I'll like sort of, you know, go a little bit deeper and say, okay, well, what are your morals? Like, what are your goals? What do you believe in? Where have you come from? And then maybe yep. there's someone that re- like resonates with them that, yeah, okay. you can. Cool. Yeah, because if it's a space that they're in every day, like I want them to walk in and be like, yes, like, you know, motivate them. You know what I mean? Yep. So, so if you have a, potentially have a. Dave's asking this for a reason. <laughs> this is going somewhere. This is new house. <laughs> you potentially have an indoor basketball area. It's an uh, indoor basketball court. That's cool. not bigger in the bush, Dave. You have an indoor basketball court at your new home. Yeah, yeah, potentially, yeah. That's cool. Uh, like, so, yeah, would you, um, so say if someone like, well, yeah, myself contacted and said, I want to paint your big LeBron thing. Would you then just come up with the idea or the face or yeah, whatever, yeah. all that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sometimes people send me through photos. Other times they, they're like, look, we've hired you for a reason. Like we don't know because I always see photos different to how other people yeah. see photos. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if they say, yep, this is the person, then I'll go and do my extensive yeah. research on Okay. References. The one with the crown with LeBron might go well in that room. <laughs> I'm going to look so contact you after the show. <laughs> That's a cool <laughs> one. That have a meeting cool after one. this. Yeah. Meeting yeah. after the show. Meeting after, meeting after. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was at um, the Arnold Classic this year. I actually saw your painting that you did. Yeah. I saw that piece that Were you, you there? did. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. Like, I just say ha- hi. No. I don't know. Seriously. Well, yeah, I know, right? How rude. Um, I knew you wouldn't care that much. You got the rock. You got the rock on, and hey, you got Arnie on your hey, back. Hey, no cheap <laughs> shot, no. <laughs> um, no, so uh, that was an amazing piece, and I remember seeing it. And then I don't. I think it was months and months later that I noticed the video that came out, which was uh, of you actually meeting Arnie at the painting itself. How did that happen? And how did that go? At the event. You yeah. Mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look, I was about to duck off to the toilet before he walked through. So I'm really <laughs> glad that I didn't because if I did, I would have uh, literally missed him walk through. And I did say to the owner, um, Ed is, he's probably, he'll probably watch this, he's the owner of Do You Even, he hired me to be there. He's awesome. I did say to him, I was like, are you sure you want me there? Because as soon as he knows like the artist, he'll – like I, kn- I, kn- I knew that Arnold had an appreciation for art. He yep. has art everywhere. He loves it. He collects art. Yep. So I was like, if he knows I'm there, he's not going to give a – damn about anyone else around that's and nice of you i was at least like yeah i knew that that would happen <laughs> no, and he's like, like no 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 like we you know you're, we want you and he's awesome yep. and i'm like super grateful for that because obviously it led to other opportunities as well so yeah arnold came through and i was painting a photo of him I don't, it would have been back in back in his bodybuilding days and it was black and white so i converted it to color by eye live and i think when he like walked up to it it's not as if he was confused, but he was sort of like gazing into it. And I think he was a bit taken back. And sort of like the first thing he said, he's like, you're, like, you're the artist. And he's like, we're going to commission you to do more. Like and that was just exactly like, straight off about it. I was like, whoa. Like, what you, get to the like, job. Yeah, like, <laughs> to the, yeah, like straight <laughs> off. I was like, whoa. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then he asked like how long I'd been working on it for. And that was pretty cool. And his team got in contact with me literally on the day. So that video, whoever shot that video, well done because they captured that audio of yes. him coming up and James, shaking shout it. out to James. He yeah, does cool. a lot of my filming for well me done, now. James. So, so yeah. <laughs> and that, what I, I wanted to play it, but the audio is harder to hear um, on a podcast. Is, but watch it. We might put a link to it. Um, and it shows him coming up and like you said, exactly what probably what you predicted, which is yeah. he was straight away like, who did this? Is she? Yeah. And then like you were there. And then I was like, hey. And then, yeah, hey, hey. And I didn't want to like step forward because I was like, oh, yeah, but yeah. And then he, and then he said, you know, we want you to do something else. Uh, in a moment like that, do you go, oh yeah, thanks, that's nice of you to say. Like, how does that feel? Does he, do you think? Are you just thinking you're just saying that? Like, what, what are you thinking in that moment when she's? When Som- says it? Sometimes I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, we'll see when that happens. But I knew that he was like, he was dead set determined yeah. to, yeah. And I've, I've asked his team, and they said. When they walked off, he says, do you have her contact look? Do you have it? And he was like full on. He knew what he wanted. That's so, amazing. Yeah. I so could sort of, you go by vibes. I could t- sort of sense that like he wasn't messing around. I knew that. So then take us through what happens now. Well, that just recent recently happened, right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so crazy. So his <laughs> so team um, reached out to me and they said, we want you to do a painting uh, for his charity 
uh, he has a charity called After School All Stars program. Started about thirty years ago. It's basically um, like comprehensive after school care programs for kids um, from low SES backgrounds to get them off the streets. Um, yeah, and and I was coming up to my craziest month in my career. I had like four massive murals lined up, and I was like, oh, when am I going to fit this in? But I made it work. And contacted a photographer and, yeah, probably produced, like, one of the best pieces I've ever done um, and walked into his home a month later because we got invited, yeah. myself and my partner got invited to an event at his house and, well, like, my painting was literally staring at me in front of his pool and they, like, framed it and just looked so boss. I was like, no way, that's so cool. <laughs> so I rolled it up and I'd sent it overseas before I got on a flight yeah. to LA. Just, I, I wasn't going to attempt that. I was like, there's no way I'm leaving this one at the airport. No. <laughs> yeah, so we had that sorted. I've learned from my mistakes, clearly. <laughs> so, did it, so, sorry, Dave, did it... Um, did it sell? Was it? Was that part of what it was? It was part. It was to be auctioned off. Yeah. So I thought initially it was going to be a live auction. It wasn't. But I, I totally understand that there's other artists that have been like loyal to the charity for years. Uh, but it did silent auction really well. It went for twelve thousand US dollars, um, which is like yeah, seventeen insane, and yeah. a half Aussie yeah. dollars. Yeah. So which wow. is so. And for me, I was just like, I don't really care what it goes for as long as it, you know the most amount possible goes to the charity. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so, because I didn't nice. take like a cut, like that was fully donated. Yeah, that's so cool. Materials, everything. So, everything, yeah. yeah, yeah. What's been uh, What's been your biggest piece that you've you've painted or, or yeah? So, I don't know. Does it get more complicated by painting the bigger piece? How do you actually go about it? Do you canvas it on the ground and then do it like that way? What do you put it up on the wall? Like, how do you, how How would you do it? Just so, describe to people. Yes. Yeah. So I think because I standard, uh, started with canvases, it was pretty daunting to move to murals. Yep. So my biggest one I've just completed in May this year, that was um, like 20 metres by – or like what, yeah. 17 metres by – something massive, like yeah, two massive. stories That's by – Yeah, massive. And that was of Queen – and where's that one so. uh, that's on sunbury road in sunbury yep 675 if anyone wants to be yep. no. <laughs> um <laughs> and check that, it out. literally in the middle of a paddock but um villawood properties hired me to do that there's a bit of a story behind it queen got booed off stage in sunbury yep um back in 1974 and they've basically done that to yeah like as a tribute to them okay cool yeah and that's going to be their sales office for two and a half thousand blocks being subdivided. Oh, really getting into yeah, details nice. now. You can no, cut that perfect. out if you want. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Um, yeah. So that was massive. And I, how, how long would something like that take? To- so I pumped that out about 110 hours in 10, 11 days. <laughs> that's yeah. about the size of Dave's basketball court. So this is why <laughs> yeah. I was asking. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. How much are they going to set me back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. So that was, that was, ma- like, that was m- mammoth, like sizzler. Um, yeah. Yeah. So to be able to draw that out, like I, I try to use a projector where I can because that just saves headaches. Yep. But something of that scale, when you're moving back, your lines are so blurred on a projector. So basically, that I was lucky with that piece because it had like concrete panels that were base, basically created a grid for me. Yep. And I had it gridded on my iPad and then just use that as a guide along with the projector. So does that mean you grid, you paint each little grid at a time? And then it pieces together. Is that how you work it? Yeah, you, you could look at it like that. You you sketch it as a grid, um, and then you can just paint it as a as a whole. Right. Um, when you sketch as a grid, is basically think of it as like a puzzle. You've got, you know, you section it out into the same size grid, sure. and then you're like matching the lines. It's so hard to explain. Yeah, no, it yeah. sounds, com- no, sounds complex. And and yeah. what I what I would imagine is when you're painting maybe in a room on a canvas you're like step back and have a look and you're like get down the scissor lift walk 50 meters <laughs> walk so 100 I can... <laughs> meters back oh hang on let me just get my drone out so i can see my own piece like wow. yeah it's yeah you can't do that and that's the hard thing like my my dad assists me with a lot of my jobs and he was holding the ipad for me and we were just chatting away like three hours had gone past and i was working on brian's nose and i was like yeah like killing it this looks awesome we both got down, looked at it and just started pissing ourselves <laughs> laughing. 
his nose was diagonal. Like, right? <laughs> it wasn't even like half off. Like it was off. Like it was literally. And I was just like, how did that even happen? And I was like, maybe because he was holding the iPad on the side and I wasn't looking in front of me. That, uh, yeah. But I don't know. But yeah, just, that was like 10 hours of fixing. Like, wow. just, so, you have to, so what happens? You go yeah. back and paint over it? Paint over and it then... and then like rebuild. Wow. <laughs> it's like a nose job. Like, you <laughs> have to like restructure it. Yeah. yeah. Are there, is there anyone that you want to paint that you haven't painted yet will smith cool. yeah yeah will smith would be cool to paint because i think he's such a character all around and then ellen degeneres she's cool yeah that'll be one day who knows now oh, yeah. 20 years or well, 50 i'll probably need a wheelchair if i oh no not that not that hopefully not <laughs> <laughs> yeah have you had any crazy uh requests some stuff that you're just like i'm not doing that or like <laughs> has anyone just like yes. lost their mind yeah well, they yeah, paint my feet or, <laughs> um, yeah, some of the messages that's I get yeah, are really, yeah. yeah. Your, like yeah one your that DM. I got last night, I was like, that is not supposed to sound like that, but that like, I'm not even going to repeat it. But me and my boyfriend just laugh like, oh, Lord, like, what? I, I just don't understand because like, I don't really send people messages. And if I do, like you you know, you'd probably read over them and think, is this, is this okay what I'm sending to some stranger I don't know? But yeah, no, people don't do that. They don't really care, do they? <laughs> nah. So how, if people want to get in contact with you to um, do a painting or a mirror or whatever, how do they do it? Just for our listeners, if anyone's out there and wanting something. Yeah, um, you can hit me up on Instagram if you want my email. Um, if it's for murals, it goes through my lovely manager. Yep. Um, but yeah, you can hit me up if it's yeah, just message me on Instagram. It's super personal. I love it. And then I can direct you where to go. But yeah, yep. canvas is through me too. Yeah. Awesome. None of the weirdos. Let's leave those on. <laughs> Let's leave yeah. the feet requests for, yeah. <laughs> How many times do you go? I wonder how much that. <laughs> like how much? You know what though? That's funny. Like even if someone gave me like I'll I'll pay you a million dollars to paint my feet, I'd be like, no, nah, I'm sorry, can't do it. So there's no price tag. Nah, no. that's just like torture. It's like, <laughs> yeah, oh, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming in. That's it's right. been awesome to thank chat to you. you. I can't wait for you to paint Dave's basketball court. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's gonna have to happen. Yeah. Hey, you, know, you better organize it yourself because I feel like some of the guys might stitch you off if they let me loose without your saying. <laughs> You never we know. You might have to. Yeah, you go on a, a trip away for work and <laughs> come, back and come back to. Yeah. <laughs> and as we said, too many white walls in here. So we're going to have to organize something as well, I think. Yeah. Done. Definitely. Sounds awesome. good. Yeah. Thank you awesome. so much for coming in. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. How's your day going? Oh, it's not too bad. In Abbotsford here, the sun's shining. Got a little, uh, had a little coffee off across the road before I popped in. So yeah, man, it's a great day. <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful time in the city, mate. It is. Oh, beautiful. It's bloody, bloody cold, but that's, that's true. Right. That's true. How's uh, how's life in sport going for you? Yeah, it's it's not too bad. Obviously, uh, yeah, working as a, a sport journal here in Melbourne, uh, it's 40, 40, 40 pretty much. Uh, it's almost three sixty five now. And Dave, you'd probably obviously be aware of it, but uh, yep. it's a, the, the middle of the year is good. I mean, this year we got what the World Cup going on with, in England. Uh, we've got uh, the Ashes coming up. We've got Tour de France starting Wimbledon. Um, so yeah, it's some late nights. Uh, Ko Sports is uh, is getting a workout for sure. So. Uh, Yes, but uh, but I mean, this time of year, I mean, for, for us, especially with the footy season, it's just a finals is sort of just starting to to sort of become a thing. Is about what eight weeks maybe yep. left to the home and away. So yep. you, after the mid season buys, you you sort of get through those. It can get a bit cold and. Uh, and boring and uh we talk about the same hamstring and same <laughs> ankle injuries that we have for knee injuries and then all of a sudden finals comes around everyone gets a bit of a spring in their step so i reckon a couple more weeks and then uh things will really start to ramp up the weather, so, weather starts to get a bit warmer yep. hopefully uh, in the next couple of weeks and uh yeah we'll be on to the finals so speaking of that so do you just for our listeners and stuff so do you hone in just on the afl or do you you speak about all these other sports that you cover because um, mm. that'd be a bloody busy, busy lifestyle for you if you're covering all these sports, having mm. to watch it, thinking about all these headlines to, to come up with and that. Do you, yeah, is your main role at the moment just AFL or are you, are you focusing on other sports? Well, I'll, just to give a breakdown, say, um, so Seven News, we've got basically our main bulletin at six o'clock, six o'clock from six to seven. We'll have, say, five and a half, six minutes of sport to fill for the night. So, I mean, in that, you know, this time of year, we'll probably have three or four minutes of that will be footy. 
Um, and then obviously you've got Wimbledon and World Cup and um, that all, you know, uh, we've got to allocate as much time as them. Like Ash Barty at the moment's getting getting a lot of coverage. They'll run that in news a lot of the time. Um, so, you know, that might run in, yeah, in uh, higher up in the balls. And so, um, but yeah, it's mostly footy really. Um, and you just sort of keep an eye on the other stuff. Um, as it comes um, so I love my cricket so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big cricket man so watching a lot of the World Cup looking forward to the Ashes coming on um, but yeah it's footy 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 at this stage so um, yeah How much of your content ends up on the cutting room floor? That's a good question um, and yeah a lot like I mean if we go to a training session our cameras will shoot probably for a main session probably 20 minutes and we'll use probably 30 seconds of that max <laughs> which i mean is ridiculous but um so but it is what it is i mean it's it sort of sounds ridiculous but i mean all we, all we want is is just you know to capture the viewer's attention and you've got you know you've really got five ten seconds to do that so um you know dave probably sees us on you know hanging outside the club just getting shots of players walking in the club and you know if, if they're not training that day it's sort of it's ridiculous but mm. you know you just need a, a fresh fresh start to your, yeah. whatever your story is so it you know if dave's hurt his, hurt his knee or whatever you just need a shot of uh <laughs> of the lovely man walking into scans and and uh which is a wonderful place every oh, journal yeah, loves great. hanging outside of uh Amy Park. Park scans. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious there, i tell you what there is not a colder place in the world yep. in july than amy park uh medical center it is uh, where dreams go to die outside there <laughs> but for a uh, for a journal it's not fun so but look i mean it's just the nature in in, in tv uh, yep. unfortunately you just need some fresh content so um yeah it's uh a lot of that's a lot of the stuff you shoot just goes yeah you know, up into thin air and yeah never seen again which is uh which is just part of the business it's amazing you say that because uh like a lot of the time when there's a news story or there's flashes of us training all that like me as a player you know sort of how long ago that vision was and there's <laughs> always vision from like i reckon two or three years ago just like yeah that player is still not on the list or that player's not on the list anymore yes all that right. kind of thing so the current story will be I can't like it might be one of us walking out of the club mm. with that, but then it's a flashes of us training, and there'll be different sponsors on the uniform. Yeah. There'll be players <laughs> that right. aren't there anymore. I've worn those boots for two years. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, nah, we we do try and get away with stuff like that. But it's 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 a crazy business because you know we could show um you know you walking into the club six months ago and the viewer won't know. No, exactly. Um, but you know we need a fresh shot. So yeah. uh, up we are in the morning at seven thirty. Yep. you know outside of footy club which is uh, to be honest from a journal it's it's the worst thing it is the worst thing as you know f from a tv journal um well, that's what i wanted to get into mm. you about like have you so you do have to sort of wait around like we understand as players that yeah you got you got to do your job mm. and we got to do our job and our job is to try and ignore you as we walk in yeah. <laughs> yes but uh like we, we do know that um yeah you, you got to be there and you got to create content for your six mm. o'clock news or whatever um have you got any good stories that that you can share of you having to wait around or oh, players that have absolutely yeah. <laughs> absolutely i actually remember i just started at um at uh at seven um and uh we were i think it was J jack silvani was was gonna make his debut and it might have been a tuesday or whatever and they were playing friday night or whatever and um anyway so uh i had got to uh and we, you know plan amy's as a as you know the day goes we go all right what do we want to get at you know what's going to be making news at six o'clock tonight so we think like jack savani's going to make his debut for instance um so we'll get him on his way into the club you know he can tell us how excited he is and if his old man giving him any advice or whatever and bang we can go elsewhere for the day and try and find another story anyway so i get there about five minutes after he's walking into the club and another crew from fox sports which is sort of a competitor i guess has you know chatted to him got him on his way in and they're going you beauty we'll head off but we've missed it so uh -huh. i've got the boss you know back it's uh, and meanwhile you know all day the, the competitors are promoing you know here from jack on you know, his day right, right, and here we are <laughs> don't have it <laughs> missed the story exactly yeah. <laughs> so we've got to wait essentially and if the club doesn't want to really put them up you know it's it's sort of um uh, yeah, there's nothing you can do except for wait. So it's actually interesting because I haven't thought of that. How often do you say the same thing to seven different blokes out the front or ladies out the front 
and just go, mate, I just told him, who are you? Yeah. Yeah. Does that That's happen right. a lot? Well, you do. And the other thing I think you might be alluding to now is if they're, if we know we're waiting out the front, mm. we'll just hang around inside oh, for a absolutely. little bit. Like, <laughs> or we, we, two things, we might either hang around and make them wait and we'll just make ourselves occupied. We'll watch more vision or we'll do something with the coach or whatever. And we know they're waiting out the front. Or you try and sneak out the back while they've been waiting there for um, 20 minutes. Or I've got a, a, to bypass off your story there. Um you spoke about Olympic Park there, and I, I know that I think it was Jackie Reed was the was the girl that. Um, so a couple of years ago, I was getting a scan or whatever, and um, the people at Olympic Park Imaging used to look after us. They do look a after you bit, very yeah. well. So yes, she yeah. saw me walk in and then uh, waiting out the front, and then um, the people at Olympic Park. So I was there for about half an hour, and then I walked out um, the side door, got in the car, and as I was driving down the car, driving down the ramp to turn back onto. Swan Street or wherever it was, I just wind down the window, start a wave. <laughs> yeah, a little wave. A little oh, wave it's the game then. within a game, really. And is, yeah. and just with Jack, I remember, so I waited all day and I've, I just started at seven. I'm like, you know, bloody hell, you know, here we go. The boss, um, you know, is 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 desperate to get these bloody shots to, to promo them. Anyway, it was about 3.30 in the Arvo, so I was there from, you know, 7.30 in the morning all the way down to 3.30 in the Arvo when he comes out and it's, you know, Jack and I just grab you for for yeah. two, please mate just for two quick grabs and I, I don't want to be here any, any longer than you do and he's like yeah sure no worries so thank you Jack as, a, as an 18 year old he's very nice to give me a grab and, and tell him about his pending debut but it's it's look it's the worst part of our job absolutely um, and it's something you know that it doesn't make anyone feel feel good about themselves but at the same time it's it's you know unfortunately it's we feel like at the moment it's sort of a necessary evil a lot of the mm. time um, I, I think the best clubs to deal with with are uh, as when you can go look we want to have a chat to dave on his way in and we'll ring Essen and go you know can we facilitate that so we're not hanging around and you know, we're yeah. not looking like we're running after you and chasing you and things like that um now on so on all that so the nba has massive access to, to mm. players and they come in the locker room so we might have a training session on a wednesday mm. And that will, in the NFL, do. And then they come into their locker room and all the cameras will be there. Mm. The AFL and Australian sports culture just isn't there yet. And no. I guess the money they get from TV rights and all that allows them access to that. So players have always spoken about um, if we give up, we got to, yeah, got to give up something to get something. So um, we've given up um, locker room access or just more media accesses since I've started 11 mm. years ago. It's a, it's a lot more than what it used to be. When do you think the time will be, or do you, do you have a time frame? When do you reckon? So you don't, so you don't have to do door stops anymore. You don't have to mm. wait at the front. That you guys will be able to come into our locker room. You'll be able to interview us maybe on the track after training. Um, you get that exposure where we're happy because we're getting money for that um, as a whole collective in the mm. CBA. But then also you guys just have access where you don't have to do that door knocking and or yeah, door, door stopping, stopping and all that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'd love to get this point clear. We hate it as much as anyone yeah. else. So anyone who says they like doing it is, uh, yeah, is just a sucker for punishment yeah. but um yeah i mean yeah in the nba you know they've got a, a window uh but like the coaches will do presses before the game and mm. after a game yep. which is you know ridiculous really because <laughs> anything he says before the game is completely obsolete but i think it's it's a fair way to go it's it's a culture thing 100 percent um you know you you look at um yeah the states uh and they're just they're they're not ahead uh, as in their you know their um, further ahead from where we are, but they're they're just on a different path in terms yep. of the access and and the culture um, in, in terms of the media. And I yep. think a lot of it comes from, um, I mean, we do have a tall poppy syndrome here, probably yep. more than what we've got. Well, they have over there. Yep. Um, so, yes, I think it's going to take a while. But that would be ideal. Is that you know we can go if we want to have a chat. If you're out of contract in the end of the year and you know we want to say hey can we sit down with Dave for two minutes and yep sure done and this is your window and get shots of training everyone's gone. But the problem with that is I guess is the best way to pro promote something is to have it exclusive yep. and you'll see now I mean the term exclusive is almost been overused or it probably has been really because everyone you know you've got an exclusive just because there's so many different avenues of, of news that yep. an exclusive is sort of your dip, you know point of difference so yep. to get an exclusive um, you know for us the easiest way um, it sounds stupid but um, yeah is and with pictures you know it's just to go and hit up Dave and go Dave how's your contract going and, and you know hopefully the others aren't there and yep. we get him and uh, you can move on but um, I mean the, the real the, the real stories are, are, aren't done that way you know that's just yeah. 
that's t- just filling a bulletin for every night, you know, just day to day. You know, the, the real stories are on, you know, the issues um, around, around the game and, um, you know, uh, yeah, but like I said, if there was an open media session or yeah. whatever, anything you get really, I mean, it just means everyone else is going to get it. Mm-hmm. So, yep. um, you know, as a from a, a TV point of view, you'd love more access, but then again, you do just you want exclusive access rather yeah. than everyone. So yeah. that's why you pay the money. I mean, uh, Channel Seven um, obviously pay a lot of money for the the rights, um, and we are talk about this in our newsroom often. Is that as part of those rights, you know, we should have had a condition where we get to go to a club and go right the bombers are playing friday night we want to speak to you know um dyson hevel on you know or whoever we want we're allowed to speak to one player you know yep. as, as part of an exclusive chat because we're the rights holders yep um which, but, you, which you see with the espn when they do yep. like a friday night game yep espn friday they have always have those chats with whoever's hosting or like mm. doris or whatever it is they have those and you see it, they cut to it during the game mm. where they're sitting there with the, with the reporter and that and they actually gain that access. That's right. And they do do that. Um, I mean, the broadcast guys will come out to the footy clubs and do interviews during the week, but they play them, you know, at halftime or mm. during the game or whatever and, and, you know, it doesn't really help us because yep. we've got to feel, you know, get people interested in the game beforehand. So, um, it, is a, it is a two-way sword. And, and look, you, people will always want more access. Yep. You can open it up as much as you want, but at the end of the day, there's always going to be someone wanting more. Yep. So, um, you know, it's sort of, um, you, you know, give an inch and, and we'll take a mile. So I completely understand where players are coming from because, you know, you guys must feel when when you walk into the club, you, just, you know, you go, geez, oh, just just leave me alone. <laughs> like, I know, I'm just walking into the club. Like, yeah. you know, it just, you know, I don't want to be filmed today. And that's completely fair. And, we, and there's a, there is a slippery boundary there, you mm-hmm. know, like we feel like we can... You know, probably get shots of you if you go into the club, or if you get a scan, or whatever, or if you know you go into your manager's office, maybe, or if you're meeting with someone. But you know, do you go to someone's house if it's a big yeah. enough story? And unfortunately, it, and and the logic is, you know, if you don't do it, someone will. Someone will. Yeah. So, and that's the, it's the logic. And you miss out on the story. That's yeah. right. So, um, so a lot of it, um, yeah, it is a slippery slope, um, and it's a difficult one to judge. Very difficult um, a lot of the time, and and there are. You know issues that um, there are a lot of things that we know about that we don't report, um, and mental health is such a massive issue in the game right now. And you know you see Dane Beams yesterday yep. sort of coming out, and um, you know mental health is a, is a massive um, a talking point. You know because you're never going to break a story about that no. a guy is suffering mental health. You just wouldn't do that. Um, so on that right now, hmm. with his instance, do you guys with his circumstances? Sorry, do you? Now leave it and let uh, try and let him take time away from the game. Oh, or yeah. you guys always chase up the story to find out the finer details well, of what's I, happening. Well, I don't think so. I mean, no, no um, yeah. is the answer to that. You know, once that that is the issue, you know, that obviously, you know, you you give the guy some space, one hundred percent. And yeah, you know, you would never, th- you know, even ask to chat to him really if yep. you didn't want to mm-hmm. chat. Um, but I mean, it's all about building relationships, really, yeah. and and a lot of the time we you don't feel like you can you get to do that because you just you in the grind, you know, you're chasing a you know, Dice Neville's got a tight hamstring, so you know you don't get to sort of have a chat to him, and um, you know you just kind of throw questions on his way into the club, and he goes, oh bloody hell, you know? yeah. Um, so yeah, okay. things like that. But um, uh, yes, uh, it, it, the sad thing is that uh, as a TV journal, we get we get very good with uh, who drives what car. That, that <laughs> becomes a very what about when you got a sponsorship very, when you change cars all the time? That's, well, that's, that's handy. That, that is that. a very good point. I don't even know what car you drive. I'd, I'm like, who, who just drove up the driver? Oh, it was Dave again. Yep. Something new. Yeah, yes. exactly. That's so right. He's smart. That yeah, he's smart actually. <laughs> so you, what about you at the start of you at starting career when Zach are on yeah, the that, place? That was that bad. Was, yeah. That oh, did you have personalised plates? My sister's got them for me for my 18th. Yeah. Mm, how personalized. long did they? How long did they stick <laughs> around for? Four months, I reckon. Oh, really? Yeah. Then they were gone. Yeah. The new car came Funny. in. Funny. I, I don't know if you uh, remember this, but where I was early days was at Richmond uh, Footy Club working there, and we at Richmond and Essendon played, and Dave and I drove into the game together, and I was in my uh, uh, players and, and staff kit, and Zach is in his, and we rock up to the MCG. In in the Zackermobile, <laughs> Zack and number plates on, and there's the, they stopped us at the car, and there was a few fans near the car entrance, and they were like, 
oh, you're with the enemy and they're yelling out some stuff and you're like, nah, he's all right. And that, I think the guy scanning the tickets was like, this is so weird. Yeah. So I was like similar age looking, like, yeah, right, yeah. like, what are you guys doing? And I remember driving through the car park and some of the staff who were like my bosses were just looking at me like, what was that? And then they, anytime you touched the ball that day in the coach's box, they just turn around and look at me and just shake their head because they just knew they're like, oh, Zach is mate. Here we go. <laughs> They'd go well with gambling these days when you're driving with the enemy and yeah, yes. sharing stories. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. like, I, I was, um, uh, I mean, just on sort of the, the media access, I mean, the, the Kawhi Leonard circus that mm. is going on at the moment, oh. free agency like uh, Toronto TV had a chopper up, you know, having shots of him walking out of his private jet landing in Toronto. They then had like an OJ style you know chase like follow him. of his car you know they were like these two black suburbans Kawhi's in one of them he's you know reportedly <laughs> on his way to meet the raptors i mean it's oh. it's it is ridiculous it's amazing. Yeah. well i mean if you think back to when ben cousins went overseas to get yep. his rehab they followed him on the plane yeah they were yep. in the airport in la when he landed and they mm-hmm. were on the same flight as him and like that stuff i don't think you get away with that these days do you reckon no yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, I think um, I think it was Craig Hutchison uh, who uh, who was on, over there and, and yeah, bought a ticket on the plane and you know wasn't too welcome on, on the plane. <laughs> yeah, on the plane yeah, with him, but it's a long flight to yeah, LA, yeah. so um, yeah. I mean, and but that's it. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, yeah I, you know, there is. Um, a lot of the time, you know, uh, sometimes you can get it when your interests do align. Like, I mean, say a player wants to talk about his contract and just get mm. it off his chest or whatever, and yep. we, you know, will happily provide that that um, avenue. Mm. But yep. um, you know, probably most of the time, you're you're you're, you're at chasing. Odds. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, but speaking of like players moving clubs and that, mm. you spoke about quite. We had obviously had a massive article yesterday that was released mm. and stuff and. You don't know where that source comes from and, and why the person writes it. And it's frustrating because the player, obviously, we're talking about right to Fantasia and the, and the, mm-hmm. the article that he wants to go home. And, and, and the fact that you name a club then also speaks that it's probably, or well, they're trying to have the angle that it's a true story and that it's current now and that he wants to leave and all this kind of thing. And you get just undue pressure on the player. The player hasn't said anything. The quotes that we used were from four or five years ago that he spoke about his relationship with Nathan, Nathan Bassett. Who coached him as a junior um, or whatever it was in the yeah, under sample, yeah, it's sample, yeah. So it's just amazing that these these articles and that still come out to this day when we've had a lot of. I reckon we've had a lot of growth with our relationship with the uh, media, especially at our footy club, over what happened in the last five, six, seven mm. years. And um, we sat down with some journos from the AFL and and all that. Oh, so the Herald Sun and all that, and spoke about the relationship and the stories that came out and all that. And you, you can never escape it. Like we're, we're sitting there, it's a it's a Wednesday afternoon and we're just at the footy club with Raz and um, yeah, he's just trying to play some good footy during the season. He's still mm. contracted for two years. And then you hear about this article that comes out that wants to go home. And then the bloke clarified on Twitter later that, oh no, no I didn't say he wants to head home. He wants to head home some stage in his career and all that, which a lot of people probably would understand because he's from South Australia and he's living in Victoria. But it's amazing that these articles come out that you know are gonna one, create a headline Two are going to create media storm around the footy club. Like we walked out last night and there was camera crews everywhere. Yep. It just puts undue pressure on a player. Fans start to turn on you, which is which just happens. Like it's fact. Fans start turning. Oh, he doesn't want to play for the footy club anymore. So you're creating this massive story about for this kid who's a 23 year old who all he wants to do is play footy. He's contracted for two more years. It's it's unbelievable that it still happens and you create this massive story for even it might only be one or a couple of days, but then all of a sudden, yeah, fans might start to turn on you. Other people. He's all of a sudden has a hundred text messages on his phone going, what's going on here? Yeah. What are you doing? Surely you're not leaving all this stuff, but this stuff still happens and it's... Yeah, and look, it's, I mean, the journal who wrote that, Mark Mark McGowan, I mean, look, I, I, I don't know him that well, but I can guarantee that nothing is ever just made up out of thin air. Yeah. I can guarantee you that. So, I mean, a lot of people think that we just sit around the office and go, oh, what's a good headline for tonight? Oh, okay, let's make this up like that. The categorically never happens. Um, so... And a lot of the, like in a story like that, for example, would, um, you know, that he would have made calls to a number of different sources and verified it with probably three or four different people. And then he would have gone back to his sub editor and said, look, this is the story I want to write. These are the sources. And they would have said, all right, yeah, just to verify it and go through it. So it's not just one person chucking it up there. So look. So in your eyes, there's something to it. Um, I will look. I would. I mean, it's it's a tough one because I, I have no idea who Mark Mark McGowan sources would be. But um, 
a lot of the time there there is an element of truth there that, which i mean might be the case i mean he look he might have uh, you know suggested that look at the back end of my career yeah i wouldn't you know i would p- perhaps look to go home to south australia now um the yes f- and yeah. he's and he's a free agent in 2021 21, yep. so I, I guess i mean the story in terms of of that it would be you know uh are essendon gonna if that is the case and he's gonna go home in free agency would essendon say to him, look, we'd rather trade you next year and trade you for a player draft pick rather than lose you for nothing. Um, and I, I guess I think that was the story where Mark was going, was that at the, but potentially that's the dilemma Essendon faces if that happened, Port Adelaide, which I mean Adelaide and Port Adelaide were both interested obviously. Yeah. But um, I think it, uh, uh, that story in particular got – blown out of context to saying he wants to leave yeah, right, right now, now. Yeah, correct exactly. and, and and it did say i think it did have the, the year 2019 in there in terms of what yes. would be interested at the end of this year yes so um i can understand people make the leap straight away because i mean look, look a lot of the time people read the headline on twitter on facebook and they don't read the article and bang yeah. they jump to a conclusion yeah. and then all of a sudden you know it's the headline that sticks in their mind next time they're watching orazio and <laughs> you know and say yeah it doesn't have a good game yeah. And a couple of people yell from the stands, you know, to, you know, head off to Port Adelaide yep. or whatever. So look, and th- and that is a massive issue. And I and there's uh, what what I don't like, and I think a lot of media people don't like is when they use the term just the media in general. Yeah. Because that encompasses you know social media and uh, yep. online. Um, yeah, every single bit of media out there. Whereas. Um, you know, we don't control a lot of the stuff. You know, this is a form of media, obviously podcasting and stuff. And, um, you know, there's obviously news media and there's all sorts of entertainment and all sorts of different stuff. So, and I mean, the online stuff now, I think, I don't know if it's just this year or if it's been a gradual process, but I just reckon like the vitriol and the outrage culture has just gone to another level, I reckon. It's insane. This year. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. I reckon yeah. it has um, for sure. You, I mean, we spoke about Twitter last week and you're leaving and- and yeah, it a hundred percent has, and I think that it's pretty well documented that the algorithms that these guys put in place are to mm. grow that outrage on those channels because well, people, it drives content. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and you know if uh, you know if you're like a sub editor on a website, and that article yesterday would have probably been one of the most read articles for yep. the year. You know, yep. and you can directly see. You can show an advertiser that, okay, we say we get an article like this. This is how much traffic we get through, mm. um, you know, the website. And it just drives everything. So, yep. um, yeah, and it's just sort of snowballs and snowballs. Um, now, and But the there is a one thought process out there when which people say, well, how is a journo who writes a story like that, like they're not accountable. So people will say, well, he can just throw it out there and he has zero consequences. Mm. And I I don't subscribe to that fact because Mark, rightly or wrongly, and I don't think he – he might have framed his information a little bit better – um, because yep. Orazio, obviously, and his manager say he's not going to leave yeah. until he's end of his contract. But he, I mean, he might at twenty twenty one. He might go, I want to go home to South Australia. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, uh, but for Mark, I mean, anytime anyone sees his byline, they're going to be like, oh, well, okay, there is a, a, a hint of doubt, and people will think about that. So, I, I think as a journal, you're very accountable to, yep. to what you say because if you, you know, if a couple of times that happens, a your employer is going to go, well, you know. See you later. Yep. Um, and because any time anyone reads any of your stuff, they're just not not going to believe you. So uh, as far as people saying as a journal, you're not accountable. I think you you are very accountable. Um, yeah. So, but both ways, right? So yes. there's a double edged sword. So if he doesn't come up with a good article in that certain amount of time, then there's going to be pressure on him That's from right. the employer to Absolutely. say, "All right, mate, you haven't written anything mm. interesting." Mm. So then there's always going to be that pull of someone going, "I haven't said anything interesting in a little while. I'm going to have to." pull something out of nothing well, if I yeah, can find it? There is pressure. Absolutely, there's pressure. Um, you know, there's pressure to break stories. There's, yeah, pressure to get... I mean, um, you know, there's, from a TV perspective, we, you know, you rated minute by minute. So you can mm. literally see if your yeah. story, people switched away or if, you know, it, it gained viewers. Um, you know, website clicks. I, I know at the Herald Sun, um, you know, getting... Um, they have a lot of articles behind a paywall, for instance, and if your art, they can tell if someone clicks on your article and they haven't got a subscription, they go buy a subscription specifically to, to read your article. That is like gold because yeah. it's it's revenue for Herald yep. Sun. And Supercoach is the number one thing that gets people 
um, buying <laughs> subscriptions. So that's yeah. why they just pump out super coach content. Yep. Yeah, right. um, and, and nothing drives content like breaking news and exclusives. Those are, the, those are really the two things. Um, you know, 70% is sort of run of the mill stuff. Um, you might have, you know, your features and your nice, yeah, long yarns that, that people read on Saturday or Sunday. That's 10%. And then the last 10% is sort of what elevates, you know, yeah. whatever publication or whatever, you know, to, to, to capture the audience's yeah. attention. Um, but that's why that headline is so important. Mm. Or that's why it can be eye catching because you, I mean, I get emails from Herald Sun and I'm not a subscriber, but you get those emails. So you subscribe to the emails. And it comes up with the headline and then you have to click on it, that paywall, don't you, to then go through to the article. But the headline has got to be so good hmm. to grab your attention because I don't do it. But the, for the fans out there that read that that headline, then they'll go, actually, I will read that article. They click on it, hmm. they pay the money, and then that goes back to the person who wrote the article, doesn't it? As in they get more clicks uh, and stuff. That, yeah, well, they will get of, clicks, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that's how so, they get benefit because they hmm. create this great, great headline, yeah. but then the article might not actually be that valuable, valuable. Yeah. well that's valuable true yeah. and look and in terms of print media a lot of the time you know they won't even write the headline you yeah know, that's not the job sure. so yeah. um, and be. that can be frustrating for the journal as well but um yeah i mean it's it's a problem that i've had you know that's a age-old question really in media is, is you know you've got you've got to promote, promote your stories um yeah. And uh, yeah, sometimes um, yeah, something you know. Obviously, you can't condense a, mm. a you know a thousand word article into ten words. Yeah, um, definitely. Well, it's got to jump out of the page as well. That's now. right. And, yeah. and, and the, I think the one part of the problem is that we're competing. We we as in podcast world yep. as well now. Mm. We we've jumped into the race, like you said. But yep. also, TV's competing with YouTube, and YouTube's competing with Facebook. And then we're talking about the newspaper articles. Like I haven't bought a newspaper in I can't even remember yeah. how long now. Yeah and maybe once a year you might grab it for the grand final or something like that yep. and so they're trying to figure out a way to make money they're still yep. trying to figure it out and oh, that is it. the way at the moment and obviously advertising based content but you know Joe Blow down the road can put up a blog and and make you know a decent coin now yep. from writing some articles too Absolutely. so everyone can be a journalist now and everyone can write it and so how's that go with you know your backyard journalists and stuff mm. in terms of comparing to you who are in uh, you know well, on TV exactly that's i mean that's exactly right like anyone can can do a podcast essentially you got an iphone and you can you know you can broadcast to the world so um i think i mean the issue in, in that is it goes back to um you know having having relationships with um yeah, having you know, you know, the, the thing that uh, uh, Joe Blow sitting in their lounge room has is they don't have you know the access or the building relationships, you know, inside footy clubs with the people, and that's how you get the real stories. Really, is by having a relationship with someone um, and having being being able to um, yeah to to for them to feel comfortable to yep. to tell you things that they might not tell other people or um or yeah to to. To find out something interesting about them yeah well, yeah well just before we um let you go that it's interesting on that because the nba it's amazing like um would uh adrian would you would you yep. ask whatever his name is uh, chris broussard and all that they get so many sources it's from insane inside. yeah it's insane that it breaks pretty much that that minute or that second before the news gets announced mm. they've got so many sources within the nba and it just seems to be that culture over there that it's fine like like if I'm going to sign a contract, you guys hear that right away, and they get and they get text messages and all that mm. kind of thing. Whereas yeah, the, the AFL or the Australian, it's so far beyond that. But you still have your sources, but it's not that in it. Uh, sorry, to the minute or to the second of these yeah. guys just get it, and it's just seen to be that's that's normal. how it is over there. It's normal. Yeah. yeah. Well, did you see the choir stuff that went out? They they released saying do not leak it. That that came out this like yesterday, didn't it? A couple. The of Lakers days. leaked everything. Yeah, from, yeah, they yeah, leaked absolutely. everything from that story. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, Wodge is ridiculous. I don't know yeah. how he does, how he makes calls and and writes stuff. Yeah. And get, Adam Schefter and, in the NFL. It's oh the same my god, thing. it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I, th I think uh, over there, yeah. I mean, here we are, of very much a fishbowl. Um, yeah. You know, you've only got a certain amount of managers, really. Like, there's a handful. Yeah. Um, whereas over there, you've got just such a wide range of of people who know just yeah and there's so many different players your and family your friends your entourage is big over there so yeah. anyone in your circle could be mm. making yeah and that's like that. yeah. you know yeah. um and friend of david yeah. zaharakis yeah. said <laughs> and again it's yeah. all about trust you know you, know, yeah. you, you trust that person to to yeah. report it responsibly um yeah. and there still is a very big place for that um you know as i said you know you're never going to just chuck something up that doesn't have some sort of merit which you believe has merit yeah but at the same time you've also got um yeah you've you're competing and you've got to you've got to catch the viewer so uh, catch the viewer's attention which is getting harder and harder perfect 
Well, mate, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming in. You want to you wanna ask him any questions you need to get off the bat? <laughs> I think he's all get, good. Get, nah, this is me tomorrow. asking questions today. This is really yeah, good. no, yeah. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been good. Thank you for no, uh, no. coming along. I'm sure the, the viewers have got a good insight into yeah, our relationship and what you go through. And as I said, the, we know as players, like as an athlete, you've you got to do your job. Like We have to do our job for our, for our footy club and our fans and you guys got to do your job. So it's just good to create that relationship and have that insight for people to get hear this about you and what you guys go through and your thoughts on it so i'm sure a lot of people take a lot out of that so thank you no thanks for having me thanks for watching another episode guys we hope you enjoyed it it was a great one from our point of view make sure you like and subscribe to our youtube guys make sure you don't miss an episode whenever they drop and if you want to listen on any of your podcast devices apple or spotify make sure you subscribe to that and give us five star review and leave us a comment. See you next time.